Today is all about sound design, so I'm gonna jump into Ableton and show you five fun things you can do with Wavetable. I'm gonna start off by talking about LFO modulation. You can make a whole bunch of really interesting rhythmic effects using LFOs to modulate the filter. So I've got this LFO one here, and first of all, on both LFOs, I'm going to turn off retriggering and turn sync on this little button here. And then I'm also gonna turn it onto the square wave mode. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. One, two, three. And then uh, I'm gonna go into my matrix here and assign both LFO1 and LFO2 to this filter frequency. So maybe let's just put this one up and we can put this one down. I don't already know what this is gonna sound like. I'm just sort of experimenting and seeing what it does. So I'm also gonna change the waveform over this side. Let's start off by playing a note and seeing what it sounds like. So I'm just gonna mess around with these a little bit. I'm also gonna experiment with the rate here. Maybe we can put one of them on 16th notes and another one on something else. That's already a pretty cool rhythm. So now I'm just gonna turn on this second filter and I'm gonna use this second filter as another high pass just to take off these high frequencies. And so now we have this interesting sort of rhythm going on here. And this will sync to my tempo as well, so. I'm just gonna put my processing rack on here just for a little bit of echo and reverb. So I'm just scratching the surface here, but there's heaps of really cool rhythms you can make with using multiple LFOs with different rates sort of interacting with each other. So one of my favorite things about Wavetable is that we've got these two filters and we can actually put it into split mode and that is going to use filter one to uh, filter oscillator one and then filter two is gonna be connected to oscillator two. So we've got these two different oscillators with two completely separate filters for each one. So this is a really awesome feature and there's a lot that you can do with it. So I'm just gonna start off by using this filter one and oscillator one and just designing a classic sort of bass stab sound first, just like a saw wave. So I've got my filter here and I'm just gonna go to envelope two and sort of assign that to my filter frequency over here. We could even go over to a different filter type and just drive it a little bit. Maybe I'll just turn this volume down of this one. So far, it's just a classic filtered bass pluck sound. But if we want a little bit more interest, something a little bit different, what we can do is use this second oscillator and this second filter to introduce something a little bit new into the sound. So maybe hit one of these wavetables in here and just sort of experiment around. And I'm gonna go over to my envelope three and I'm gonna map that one this time to my filter two frequency. And this time I'm gonna go maybe to a band pass and check this one out. Maybe even a 24 decibel per octave. And then we can sort of just adjust these envelopes to be a little bit different to each other. So this one is really nice and it's quite subtle, but it's adding a whole bunch of sort of growliness to it. This oscillator in here, this is what it's doing. So again, there's so much you can do with this, but this is just a practical use that you can do to just spice up your bass lines a little bit. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a Wavetable presets pack, but we do have a free Serum presets pack. So if you're interested in grabbing those ones, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, you can also have a lot of fun using multiple envelopes at the same time, sort of modulating the same parameters as well. So I'm gonna use envelope two and envelope three to modulate this filter frequency here. And then I'm just gonna make them slightly different to each other and see what results that has. So the first one is kind of like a plucky one. So let's just bring this down. Uh, we could even bring back the modulation a little bit. And then the second one is gonna be a slow, uh, a slow one. So you can see that it has two movements now.
So I've just tweaked this a little bit more. It actually sounds really cool when you play a whole bunch of notes in a row. You can hear that second envelope engage uh, a little bit delayed from the first one. So check this out. And we could even try delaying this even more. See how this goes? Sort of has that sort of reverse swell effect. I think it would sound really cool with some delay on there as well. So let's try this one. Maybe I'll just filter out the top end. Super nice. So that extra bit of movement you get from modulating with multiple envelopes is really fun and sounds super interesting as well. Okay, so I've just made some more tweaks, but it's pretty much the same patch. I've got two envelopes playing at slightly different rates. And now this is a band pass and we have two oscillators on now. And so I wanted to talk a bit about envelope looping. So if I just turn off the modulation from envelope three for a moment, now we just have this pluck, right? And what I'm gonna do is go over to here, this little drop down menu here and turn on the loop mode. And this way, when it gets to the end of the envelope, it's actually going to loop it again and it's gonna keep looping over and over. So. So it's kind of cool. You can pair this with the amp envelope and have this sort of fading out and then have this sort of looping over. So it's like. Something like this. You can make some cool effects this way. What you can actually do as well is if I turn the matrix on and put this envelope three back on as well. So just like we were doing last time with the multiple envelopes. So it's gonna start off by doing envelope two and then go over to envelope three and then envelope two is just gonna continue looping. So check this out. So we have this sort of interesting effect. It even sounds like a delay almost. really cool things you can do with envelope looping. So it's definitely worth experimenting with. So I also wanted to make a quick mention of the randomness feature in the MIDI tab over here. So if you click on this MIDI tab, you can see this randomness column. This just means that you can assign per note randomness to whatever you want. And it's super powerful actually. So if I just pull back this filter envelope, I've just got this arpeggiator here for an example as well. I could just go into this oscillator here and just choose a random wavetable and then assign randomness to the wavetable position really easily. And it's just going to randomly choose a position every single time I play a note. So you can see that that's playing around, which is really powerful. One of my favorite ways to use this randomness feature is just to assign a little bit to my filter frequency. And that way, every time it plays a note, my filter is gonna be just slightly different each time. You can really just go as crazy as you want with this. You can get really experimental super quickly, but it's just a really easy way to introduce some randomness into your patches and make things feel a little bit different each time. So those are just five of my favorite techniques I like to use to spice up my wavetable sound design a little bit. Let me know in the comments below your favorite techniques. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out today. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.